This year, Fort Ticonderoga is recreating dramatic events of 1759, like the 1759 Battle on Snowshoes and the 1759 Siege of Carrion. Within these events, Fort Ticonderoga will feature portrayals of Major Robert Rogers' Rangers as they scouted in advance of the British Army in the 1759 campaign. We rely on period images, documents, and archaeological artifacts in the museum collections of Fort Ticonderoga to inform how we recreate the distinctive jackets that clothed and helped Rogers Rangers conceal themselves during their scouting. Within the museum collections of Fort Ticonderoga, the 1774 Thomas Davies painting, A View of the Lines at Lake George, 1759, featured one of Rogers Rangers standing in the foreground before the British camp. Other contemporary accounts of Rogers Rangers confirm aspects of Rangers dress, including a distinctive style of short green coat. In an April 22, 1758 letter from Albany, purchasing agent John McComb wrote to his New York City employer, the merchant firm of Gregg and Cunningham, about Robert Rogers' clothing purchases that winter. He wrote, the clothes that Rogers had made for his people are chiefly of green bath rug and low price green cloths, with white metal buttons and white silver lace, hats, some of them silver laced, cord and looping on their green jackets, all lined with green serge. As he went on, I believe a parcel of Scotch bonnets would sell well, as the Rangers who can get them wear nothing else when they go out. A common detail on the hunting jackets worn by Rogers Rangers were additional breast pockets to hold bullets. A runaway from the Maryland Gazette on October 1st, 1767 noted, William Haddon had on an old red jacket, an old green short hunter's coat with pockets under the arms and yellow metal buttons. In creating a version of Ranger's dress from British regular clothing, light infantry jackets included these additional breast pockets. May 1759 orders from General James Wolfe for the creation of light infantry companies included detailed instructions for these pockets from General Jeffrey Amherst. The following order for the dress of the light infantry as approved by His Excellency General Amherst goes on, Besides the usual pockets, he has two, not quite so high as the breast, made of leather for ball and flints, and a flap of red cloth on the inside, which secures the ball from rolling out, if he should fall. Though rangers' jackets were commonly available military clothing, they were not uniform garments per se. A July 1759 advertisement in the New York Mercury detailed the dress of an enslaved individual who had served several years in the Rangers in the hopes of gaining his freedom. Taken up, and now in the jail of Goshen in Orange County, the ad continues, he has had the smallpox, and a little pitted with it. Has a scar on his right wrist, he says he was shot with a ball, is five feet seven inches and a half high, is about 25 or 30 years old, has a green jacket lined with red, buckskin breeches, blue Indian stockings, fine white shirts, chitterling, has a gun, iron mounted, spotted silk handkerchief. He says he was in Rogers Rangers three years and was at the Battle of Ticonderoga, that he belonged formerly to one Daniel McCoy in New York, who lived near Old Sly and that his master had given his freedom for serving three years in the Rangers. He is a spry, able fellow. As we recreate the clothing for outfitting Rangers at our special events, they are made with more than just needle and thread. These hunting coats bring to life the knowledge found in our museum collections in addition to the incredible stories of Robert Rogers Rangers here in 1759.